Mr. Ken here with another IB questions and question on standing waves. We have a tube that's open at both ends and it's placed in a deep tank of water. So there's an open tube like a straw in a bucket of water. Uh, and we sound the tuning fork with a frequency of 256 hertz continuously above the tube. The tube is slowly raised out of the water and at one position of the tube, we hear a maximum loudness of sound. So depending on the height of the tube, the sound we hear resonating out of the tube varies. First we want to explain the formation of the standing wave in the tube. Why does it form? So let's start with the tube itself. So it's in water, and we have waves from the tuning fork traveling down. But we also have waves from the tuning fork that have traveled down, struck the water, some of it has traveled into the water, but some of it has also reflected off of that medium and started traveling back up. These two waves, waves from the source and waves reflected from the water, overlap in the medium. So we can say that waves from the tuning fork reflect off the surface of the water and interfere with the waves from the forks, from the fork. Because both source and reflection have the same wavelength or frequency, they form a standing wave. So we have waves with the same frequency traveling in opposite directions in the medium. The tube is raised uh, a further small distance, explained by reference to resonance, why the loudness of the sound changes. So we're not really meant to talk about uh, differences in path and standing waves. We're meant to talk about resonance. Uh, so we might say that all materials have a resonant frequency that depends on their properties, like length. length. By changing the length of the tube above the water, its resonant frequency changes. Only when the resonant frequency of the tube matches the frequency of the fork do we hear a loud sound. Okay. So as we pull the tube out of the water, its resonance, its resonant frequency changes around between different values, and it's only when the resonant frequency of the tube matches that of the fork that we hear the loudest sound. If they don't match, the sound is quieter. Now the tube is gradually raised from a position of maximum loudness until the next position of maximum loudness is reached. The length of the tube above the water surface is increased by 65 centimeters in that time. Calculate the speed of sound in the tube. So let's zoom over here and draw in a diagram. Here's our tube. Here's the water. And we're going to form a standing wave in the tube. We, we don't know how many uh, wavelengths fit in the tube at first, but it doesn't matter actually. So let's just start by drawing some appropriate number of wavelengths. We'll have an antinode at the open end of the tube, a node at the closed end of the tube, and maybe we see a pattern that looks something like this. Now the idea is that we're going to raise the tube out of the water until we get another standing wave. And if this was our initial standing wave, 
then the next standing wave is going to have an antinode in the same place, a node in the same place, an antinode in the same place, but we're going to fit one more node and one more antinode into the diagram. So there's the wave we had before, but because the tube is longer, it now fits with an extra portion of the wave inside. This distance is that 65 centimeters. And that 65 centimeters, in order to produce another loud point, has to have this half a wave now. So there's half the wave from one side to the other. The rest of the wave is back down to here, back to the other side. So one whole wave goes out and back. This is just half a wavelength. So that is equal to half a wavelength. Coming back over here, we get to say then that half a wavelength is equal to 65 centimeters. Therefore, a full wavelength is 130 centimeters. We want to know the wave speed, which can be calculated by the wavelength times the frequency. That's 130 centimeters times the frequency, which was given in the beginning of the question, 256 hertz. Multiplying those two together to two significant figures, we get 330 meters per second. Hertz become per second, and we can convert centimeters to meters by dividing by 100. It gives us 330.